really felt, really felt compelled mm. uh, because we are part of a church that is allergic to grace mm. until they need it. I, I really wish the black church had as much grace as those who were in MAGA. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, have modeled for us unconditional love mm -hmm. for Jesus. somebody with 36 felonies. Mm -hmm. She said, you can still be president. <laughs> we, Jesus. we can have one flounder and you shouldn't preach. Jesus. You shouldn't be in ministry. And so people outside of the courthouse in New York say, I'm still voting for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still want them. Uh, and I've never seen the black church rally around somebody. Um, we love Paul and hate Saul. Mm -hmm. Says, I want you in your completed process, mm -hmm. but I don't want you in your journey. Uh, and when you come through the journey, we want you in witness protection. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Let, let's just all pretend. I'm going to say something real quick, real quick. The truth, or Emmanuel, he was saying prior to that, because I couldn't show the whole clip because it was long. He was saying that the reason why he asked him that question was because in his darkest time, yeah. he came and he helped him in his darkest time. So he was like, Jamal I got Bryant. you. Yeah, he did. He what did he say to him? He said, yeah, come. He said, we got you covered. That's what that's what he said to him. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he said, I always, and he said this on the, on the video. He said, I always got your back. And if anybody got a problem with you, I could cut ears for you. I was like, dang, true. Mm. Yeah, but okay. The difference though is when the true, the true situation, he repented. Yeah. He said that that was wrong. Yeah. I have personally never heard Jamal Bryant say anything he does is wrong. Yeah, me either. Mm. I've heard him make light of it too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's not funny. Yeah, I don't even think what he was talking about with MAGA could, could be considered as love. No, what no. you have is some people supporting the guy who promotes a certain agenda that favors them mm -hmm. to their benefit. That's not love. That's yeah. not unconditional love. That's somebody saying, "Hey, we're racist." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's he, not whether race. he's racist or not, <laughs> so he's doing yeah. stuff for us. <laughs> yeah. We 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 go along with the same stuff. Let's yeah. support him instead of the other guy because he's not racist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. that's not love. That's just an agenda. That's a cult. So you know what I'm saying? that's kind, idolization. Yeah, kind of. But I think I think okay. So what I think he's hinting at is the people who are supporting a lot of the ones that we interact with are. They're Christians who feel like the agenda, the, the issues are more important than the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are the racist ones that support him. But then there are also the Christians who are like the abortion, gay rights. Those things are more at any, mm -hmm. any means necessary. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, you know yeah. what I mean? So if he says he's going to fight for the things that we care about, they're yeah. more important than those people. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I understand from their point of view, the reason that they're supporting him so hard is more so because he at least pretends to care about what they care about. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's not right either, right. in my opinion. So what he's, I think his frustration is, you know, yeah, I cheat on my wife. Yeah, I talk about smoking weed in church. Yeah, I, I say homosexuality is okay. Yeah, I say such and such. And y'all don't support me. Y'all need to support me. And it's like, no, no, that's not right. And they're not right. Yeah. Both of these are wrong. Yeah, both of them. There, there, there's a standard, especially for your position, sir. There's a standard that you have to upkeep. The truth knew that. The truth sat down. Yeah. Like, we didn't see him for a long time. And he, he came back and he came back stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I just don't get him. Like, okay. Yes, if you have a past, if you've done something in your life, if you've fallen, you've sinned, it is 100% okay for you to come back stronger, get right, and nobody should be holding your past against you if you went through the steps, right? Yeah, you right. you did you did what you're supposed yeah. to do. But that's not what I'm hearing from him. Like I, what I hear from him is so what I do this and so what I do yeah. that and so what I do that you should love me anyway and it's grace. like <laughs> I got it. that's not that's not gr that's not what Jesus does right. for you sprinkle a little scripture. grace on my mm -hmm. food just without me repenting pretty much yeah. I told you how I feel about him a few weeks ago I, I, yeah. I don't want to get get no flack for the for the uh, I was I, I'll take it all for you because what I have to say is really bad I mean it, not really bad but it's like um that 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 interview that was three people who've all had their own scandals publicly are they kind of kind of covering each other 
more so than an outsider that would come in and be like, this conversation needs to go a in trauma a bond, direction. Or like a trauma bond or something like that. Something like that. But we all I mean, feel. We and all I get it. Each other, but. And I get it, but I feel like that conversation would be a little bit different if it was the three of us, four of us, five of us having this conversation. Well, well I think that, I don't know. I don't know about Sam and, and the truth. The truth, obviously, you said that he has, he has admiration for him. I, I don't. So mm-hmm. I, I don't. I don't have any kind of. I don't. There's not a lot of passes I care. You know that. I don't care about these people. So, so Thanks, huh? I don't. Souls, I, though, right? I care about. Souls. I care about them as, as Christians. Gotcha, so I'm gotcha. just saying. I don't. I'm not like. Oh my god. Well, well I think I, using Emmanuel as an example. I think anytime somebody helps you go through something that that matters, traumatic, yeah, yeah. you're gonna always be like, I got your back because you helped me in my dark. Is that right though? Just because you helped me go through something, I shouldn't always have your back. We, so are we going by a street code or are we going by the word of God? <laughs> right. And then here's another thing, street too. Street code is, is hey, scriptural. When it rolled on me, you had my back, so I'm going to ride for you. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> if you're not living within the scripture, you're not doing the, the, the uh, following the word of God, no matter how much you have my back, you still yeah. need to tighten up. So exactly. the question so that's is, love. that's truth. what was the advice given whereas he continued on his own Decline, like so. It was well question. after the advice was given because we know how long ago that that situation with Emmanuel was, but then we know that Jamal Bryant's been having issue after issue after issue that's followed him from the last couple of years. I've been doing this my whole career, man. You good? You bounce back? That can't be what he told him <laughs> because because the evidence, the the truth, he did not continue on doing yeah. that. Right? No, he didn't. But I'm saying the advice, the person giving the advice. Continued down that path long after the advice was given. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I so think, that, I think, so, so I think the advice, what did you really tell him? That I think was, the advice was, "We got you covered." Yeah. No matter we, what, we, we, no, we we love he you. He was like, he was like, "I'm going through." A, he called him, said, "I'm going through a rough time right now. Do you have? Can you like? I guess financially. I guess I don't know. Like, can you help me with anything? What can I do anything for you? Because I guess they would. Because t- at that time, um, if I could remember correctly, at that time. Jamal Bryant was popping like in the yeah. circle of <laughs> like, especially in that mega mega fest um, yeah. era. Like mm-hmm. he was popping. So I guess I guess the truth at that time was like, yo, I'm like by myself. Nobody, everybody turning on me. So can you but help there, me? There's value in that. Like if you see somebody is is ha- had a fall, had a had a tough yeah. time. They they were. Let's say they did something wrong, but then the reaction from the community was maybe too harsh. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. There's value in saying, hey, we got you. Don't yeah. worry about it. You, but it should still be in uh, in in um, service of you getting better. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just, oh, yeah, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. We love you. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. You're fine. It's we love you and we're gonna love you until you get to where you need right. to be. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's, it's not it's not like cancel coach. We're not saying cancel the man like he can never be seen or heard from again. Mm-hmm. But if I sit here and pacify your sin and make you feel like it's okay to continue to do it, or if I correct you and say, Hey, I got your back, <laughs> meanwhile I'm gonna go over here and continue to doing the food since I'm doing, what's what's going on? Like what, yeah. what, what are we really doing? You know what I'm saying? Like bro, yeah. he bro fell. He didn't have nobody had his back. Jamal Bryan came and said, Hey bro, we got you covered. Okay, while well, we covering you, if I go over here and say X, Y, Z, I'm gonna do this and do that, it's, does my covering really even matter? You think it was one of those situations where he was like, like I got your back now, but listen, a couple of years, you hear something about me, and you return that same grace back to me. Mm-hmm. You think it's manipulation? Oh, well, mm-hmm. here's the only thing I don't know. Again, I don't know much about these pastors. The only thing I've heard is straight out of his mouth some things that are very uh, yeah. wrong, yeah. scary. Jamal scary Bryant, stuff. yeah. 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 The boldness. He, he says things that are very, very yeah. wrong. So it's not that man shouldn't be a pastor, man. It's I'm not. Sorry. It's not about. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's not about. Come back wrong, man. I'm sorry. But listen, listen. It's not about whether you deserve grace or not. Yes, you, you. If you, you sure. do something wrong, you can, you can get grace from your family. Sure. Yeah. It's about when you continue to do things and say things that are against what the word of God says. Right. At some point, we gotta be like, hey, bro, you gotta stop. Right. Mm. You gotta stop. Like this, this is ridiculous at this point. Okay, I, I have a question. I won't play Angel's advocate. So, what happens if we had this conversation about somebody else? What happens if he did, quote unquote, do the work? Like y'all asked him, Jamal Bryant. Yeah, but he. I'm talking about in the past, okay. and he didn't come out and tell everybody the work that he did behind the past. But because where is he it? He's still about it. saying it. Where, the fruit? where the fruit? He joked about it. Fruit. We, yeah. we, we ain't seeing no fruit. Period. We seeing I'm weed. Just asking, it's fruit somebody who watches this can probably. We, we seeing like, weed. Ain't no fruit. Listen. Hey, look. If you go to a church, hey, 
You shouldn't. <laughs> exactly. I'm not. I'm like this, he's oh. just says, you he says wrong things. Yeah. All the, like so the Bible says like there, it's impossible for a, a pastor or a teacher to say the right thing all the time. Yeah, right. it's impossible because you would have to be Jesus to yeah. say it Facts. right all the time and be infallible. That is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about somebody who re- consistently says wrong things. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Consistently, we've put we. How many topics we done done in this man? Like he, he says stuff all the time. That's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That is wrong. Yeah. And another thing, the youth pastor that he picked, we talked about. Ain't no way in the world I'm finna have someone dressed that way teaching my young women and men in a youth ministry class. Mm-hmm. Come on, where's the integrity? No, so where's the character? Consistently, mm-hmm. you've seen this man do but, things outside mm-hmm. the will of God. Playing, you're judging, man. You're judging. Man, call it no. what it is, man. What's the standard? So, so let's just say it like this. Standard like, of holiness. We're not supposed to judge sinners. People who are on the outside who don't know no better. But we're in the body of the Christ. We got to supposedly, anyway, we yeah. got to hold each other accountable. If I sure. say you're doing something, I'm going to do it in the spirit of love. And yeah. you're like, man, yeah. at, the, at, at some point, like, Sharp correction has to be given sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah. bro, you got a woman dressed like a thought teaching kids. <laughs> Jesus, bro. You growing, you, you growing weed at the church. Yeah. You abusing Lord. grace. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like you're you making not, light of you're making light of your sin on uh, national television. So, yeah. so here, here's my question. Me. We just talked about Tony Evans. Mm-hmm. Is there a different reaction it's when there's somebody you like? No. No. It shouldn't be. No. No. It is. This Y'all it, know it this, is. No, 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 no. Because, because if it's somebody you like, if it's your pastor, you're going to be like, Yo, everybody, we he going through a rough that's time. That's not gonna happen, though. Crazy. Crazy. No, no. See, that's, that's, that's right. right. No. You know what I'm talking about? Saying, it, no. should, it shouldn't be a different thing, but I yeah. think the difference between Jamal Bryant and Tony Evans. How many things have we heard about Tony Evans in 48 years? How many things have we heard about Jamal Bryant in 48 days? Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, here, here, here's a, here's a, here's a question. Here's a question. Yeah. Is it worse for Jamal Bryant to be clearly wrong, just clearly wrong in everything he says, or is it worse to pretend to be right and then be found out to be a liar, to be a fraud? I got to think about that because it's which is worse. Both, which one is both it? Repeat that again. Hurt. Yeah. Is it worse for where it's very clear this man is not about what we believe the word of God is about? He says it plainly out of his mouth. He goes and does things that we consistently disagree with. It is obvious what he's about. Versus somebody who who pretends for a long, long time to be exactly what we support, and then you find out later that they are a fraud. One is so worse. Ra- so Ra- Ravi Zacharias. That's that's, a- that's one thought I had. Yes. No, you know why it's it's worse. It's number one is worse to me because you're continuing to daily lead people astray. But and those give people, them, those people have a Bible they can look at and see right, that you're true. wrong. But the people who, the people who follow the pastor, who to me that that could be more no, damaging. No, because they have been in their Bible. They un, they understand it. You know what I'm saying they're like they're they're reading the word daily. They're not being influenced by. Smoking weed in the church, or um, you know, <laughs> Which I was in an open marriage. I just didn't tell my wife. Like th- that kind of stuff is dumb. <laughs> right. That's dumb. He said that. He said that to Monique. He was like, "Yeah, I, I believe uh, in open marriages. We didn't do I was in one. I just didn't tell my wife. Come on, that, man. You can't say joke. that. that was a joke. Negro, you, you cheated. That. That ain't no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you don't. Make, but you don't make light of that. On yeah, you don't make light television. of it. So, so but yeah, I, I am. I venture to say, it is worse. To appear to be a man of God and to be pre- to be found out to be pretending the whole time. Yeah. How, you, wait, wait, wait. How do you Crazy? know? It's I agree. How I do we know that. somebody's pretending? Question. Our pastor was pretending. He was pretending to yeah, be. A yeah, man I mean, I, I yeah. get that, but what I'm saying is, how do a normal person that's not a Christian be like? This dude was pretending versus yeah, you don't some, know. I'm versus saying, somebody that's like I don't care if they know or not. Yeah. I'm just saying, is it worse mm-hmm. for that person to to appear to be godly in every kind of way, mm-hmm. and then you find out the entire time they were pretending? Okay, okay. No, going back to yes, what you just exactly, said. Exactly. So our former pastor, yeah, or Jamal Bryan. No, I think our former pastor is worse because it has a Ooh. it has a it has a more it has a. Deeper impact on people who trusted you. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. They trusted well, you. But some people okay. can be trusted. Yeah, okay. but they, it's clear. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you go to his church, you're wrong. It's obvious. Okay. He says wrong things <laughs> all the time. So let me ask you this. Your previous pastor, or Ravi Zacharias, 
Which one to hurts me, they, you the most? To the me, same. he's the same. Which one hurts you're, you the most, though? It's the same. He's on the same side of the ledger. You're you're pretending to be a person, and you're in secretly so, sinning every single day. So I, I want to caution you, though. Like, what what if we what if we didn't know this? But if somebody in the family is like, he repented on his deathbed. If you heard that, would that make it different? For it doesn't you than change the, person the fact that, that you um, continually the, led. Because you even I'm said gonna tell yourself. you the danger. The danger okay. is is that it's surprising to people. That you can pretend that to be that godly. You're crushing people. It's, yeah. it's, it's damaging to realize that you can appear mm. to be godly for that long. That's psychologically damaging, man. So like, yeah. it really hurts. I'm going to say this for the people in the chat. Tony Evans and Jamal Brown are nowhere near in the same category. We're not putting Tony yeah. Evans on a pedestal saying he's just without sin and perfect, but he... He has a better track record than Jamal Bryant. We're just going to say that. So, Jamal Bryant said, man, since y'all in an A, can I come through? Come through. Pull up. Come through. Pull up with your Bible. <laughs> and, and, open, Bible. And, and, and open it. Open me. But I think it goes back to the Old Testament, for real. When the when the kingdom split and you had the northern and the southern kingdom, God literally showed favor to, wow, I say favor loosely. Favor loosely. But he actually <laughs> liked the kingdom that was like Jamal Bryant that was loud in their wrongdoings, then I think it was Judah who was pretending to be godly, but doing they were whitewashed walls. Mm -hmm. So I think it is scripturally right. What you're saying is correct. Mm. I'm just asking. It's, it's worse to pretend to be something. To me, it's and easy to call way. out Jamal. The reason, and the reason I brought that up is because it is so hard to, like what, I'm not saying this is about Tony Evans, but let's let's say it's my pastor. Yeah. When that person has such a good reputation and they appear to be so godly, it's harder to call them to the carpet because they are so favorable in your heart. You're like, oh, they couldn't have done I that. Feel they like couldn't it's equal, have, when they need to be called out. You're wrong, but nobody wants to do it because they pretended to be such but, a good but, person. So. But I think that okay, I think the difference is it's that public opinion of like you said, come to the carpet. And I think sometimes some people want to. I think the guy that you, the, the the pastor you're talking about of like pretending wants to do it behind the scenes versus coming to the carpet. So when somebody goes, hey, why are you preaching again? And it's like, yo, I've been I've, I've been I've been in recon reconciliation. I've been working on myself. I've been doing all the process behind the scenes for a mm -hmm. couple months or, or a year. And it's like, no, you need to come to the carpet because we need to know what happened or how's this process working. And it's like, I don't have to tell you the process. No, but that's not what I'm talking right. about. That person, that person is in the right. You make a mistake, mm -hmm. you you realize, you repent, and you work on getting yeah. better. I'm talking about the person who knows they're doing wrong, but they know how to convince you <laughs> that they're a Christian. I think it's. it's I think it's. Mm -hmm. I personally think it's really one and the same because. I think it's equal. When I look at Jamal Bryant, you can't tell me Jamal Bryant thinks he's doing wrong. In his mind, he thinks he's leading people down the right path. He thinks, he I'm thinks he's right. He yeah. thinks he's yeah. right. I'm teaching people about grace. We know he's leading people astray. But in his mind, he thinks he's doing that. The other person who's over here, they may be preaching the word like your pastor. When you looked in the word and you lined up his sermons and stuff like that, when you heard, you were like, okay, this lines up with scripture. Mm -hmm. You just didn't have no idea he was a completely different person behind the scene. The word went forth correctly. Both pastors think they're right. Mm -hmm. Both of them think they're leading people, but yeah. both of them are doing wrong simultaneously at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, so I think it's equal. So we're saying basically around the table that the, in essence, you're saying the double life pastor is worse than the dude that just said it is what it is. I'm living my life and I'm still doing. I just think the double life pastor yeah. has the ability to crush the heart. There's people that used to go to our church. That are have never been the same. Yeah. Yes. Emotionally, it can't. They will never yeah. trust another pastor. They will never trust another church because that damaged them so badly. Yeah. To me, it just has the potential to be worse, and and that's why it's so important. If you are really a Christian, mm -hmm. that you constantly check your heart. Am yeah. I am I am I hiding something? Am yeah. I <laughs> am I really being truthful with who I am? Because if you wow. develop like a knack. For like you've been given all the tools, it's like uh, you you know where all the secrets are in the the word. You know how to say yeah. the right things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous yeah. if you know how to manipulate the word mm. to get what you want out of it. Yeah. To be able to get women to like you so that you can have moments with them by themselves, so you can cheat on your wife. You know how to 
get a woman to think that your power as a pastor means that you're allowed to go outside of your marriage. Like he was manipulating the word because he yeah. knew it so well. Yeah, that's I mean, dangerous. That's I think the Narcissism. gifts of God. Yep, the gifts of God come without repentance. I was yeah. talking to a friend about that yesterday. It's certain people who have just an appeal, who are, who people just gravitate toward. Like for whatever reason, they have a gift, and when people feel comfortable talking to them, they feel comfortable. But you can use that gift for destructive means, and you can use that gift to encourage people with the word and things of that nature. And yeah. some people have that gift, and they don't have good stewards. And when you get a certain amount of power, people start idolizing you, which humans are not designed to be worshipped. They're not designed to be idolized. Mm -hmm. You're out of your comfort zone because you're not supposed to be there. You don't know how to handle that kind of responsibility mm -hmm. properly. You don't have checkpoints in place for people in your church to say, hey, Pastor, you're getting a little bit beside yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody's letting you do whatever they want to do because you pastor and pastor said. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you have somebody there that holds you accountable and check you and say, hey. Using your flesh a little bit That last sermon Let's tone mm -hmm. it down next week mm -hmm. When you don't have that This is what happened You spiral out of control Now yeah. you're growing weed In your church You know what I'm saying <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and now you're going straight to, uh, it, 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 Literally okay, Can we ask you a question Is that uh, a final Is that a reality thing Or is that something He just said That he wanted yeah, to do Yeah it was something You said he okay, wanted to do I, know, I don't think I, he started yeah, doing yeah, it. I was like, <laughs> But the fact that Anyway um, So <laughs> Jeez, man, that was just so Crazy. disappointing to do. But again, I prefer that over what I had to deal with. Jamal Brown need to be a pastor. 